Hello! How's it going? I'm Andy, and welcome back. Uh, in this episode, I'm gonna paint one of my bots from my uh, last build video. Uh, this guy has flamethrowers, so I thought uh, he would suit a flame paint job. Uh, but first, I'm gonna take some uh, black and brown acrylic here, and uh, just give him a rust coat. I've just mixed some of it up here, just to make it dark brown. And uh, yeah, just gonna use this dark brown, give him a good coat all over. Uh, just make sure to get it into all those nooks and crannies. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much first layer, rust coat done, doesn't have to be perfect. And um, for the next coat, I've got some clay here, again just cheap, cheap acrylic. And yeah, uh, put some on my wet palette here, get my brush loaded. And I'm going to stipple this all over, uh, just being careful not to completely cover all of my first coat of brown. Um, I'm just trying to build up some texture and just some variation, so that any rust I leave showing isn't going to just be brown. So yeah, that's that's first stubble coat done. Next, I've got some uh, khaki tan here, and um, it's just the same process again. I'm just gonna load my brush up here and then carefully stipple or dab uh, all over the figure, and uh, just making sure I get it into all those joints and cracks because they're the places that I'm more than likely gonna be leaving exposed. And then finally, just some chocolate brown here, and same as before, just dab, dab, dab all over, being careful not to cover up all the work that I've already done. And that's a rust coat nearly done, uh, but just finally one last step, I'm going to take this uh, smaller brush, uh, this one's nice and scruffy, and I'm just going to mix the colours up randomly, and go back over one more time, and uh, this will just add a wee bit more variation, and it'll just make sure that all those nooks and crannies are well stippled. And that's it, rust coat done. I want to paint the body black, uh, but first I'll mix up some grey paint, and that'll kind of work like an kind of like an undercoat, and that means when I paint the black over the top of that, I can leave a wee bit of that grey sort of poking out from underneath the black, just to sort of look like weathered black paint. And as I'm painting, I'm just leaving random spots of rust exposed, uh, and I can fill them in later if I don't like them or not. And especially the likes of the weld line here around the head, I'm making sure I want to leave it um, exposed the whole way around. And that's the head done. And then I'll just use the same method on the rest of the body. And that's all the grey undercoat done. Uh, plenty of places are left exposed, all those edges, uh, all the corners, and any place it would generally get wear naturally. And now for the black, and for the black I'll just use my grey coat as a guide. Um, I want to just paint up to the edge of the grey, and leave a wee bit of that grey poking out. Um, this is just, just kind of makes it look like the black paint has chipped and faded over time. Well in my opinion it does anyway. And that's his arms and his body done. I'll just do the same again on the tanks here. But the tanks have kind of did a wee bit more wear on them. One a wee bit more of that rust poking through on the tanks. Just to show that they've been sort of knocked about a bit. And that's his arms and his body done. And now I can move on and get his legs sorted. And for the legs I wanted to go for like that hot rod look. Where the flames sort of fade from a uh, yellow to orange to red. So I'll start here with some of my pure pumpkin and my red, I'll just get a wee bit of pure pumpkin on my palette and basically give it an undercoat of that because the yellow won't cover very well and so I'll start with a wee, an orange base coat and then there'll be a wee bit of orange poking out from underneath the yellow I'm just using the same method as before uh, just leaving those edges exposed and leave the rust coat showing in places that would naturally get worn legs and feet done I'll just get some on the underside of these tanks here, just a wee bit. I just want the flame sort of licking over the edge of these tanks. And then before I forget, I should put a wee bit on the tips of the flamethrowers here, just to make it a wee bit easier to blend later on. And now I can take my cadmium yellow and go over the feet, and just go about halfway up the shins because uh, this is where I plan on blending it with the orange, uh, just doing a wee wet blend with the orange. 
and my orange paint is still a wee bit wet so it can sort of work on the wet blend a wee bit and um, but uh, it'll not come together really to add a few more coats i'm just going over the yellow again here just to brighten it up and then i can work on that wet blend a wee bit more and i just keep fiddling with it till it looks right add a wee bit more orange wee bit more yellow blend them together a wee bit more but uh, i don't think i'm going to fiddle with it anymore i think that's i'm going to call that good Alrighty, legs and feet done. Now for the best part, the flames. Uh, so I'll take my red here and get some on my palette and just mix in some of that pumpkin uh, just to brighten the red up a wee bit. And I've actually got a full tutorial on painting flames uh, on spoons if you want to check that out. But basically what I'm going to do is paint like a curvy U-shape. But oh, my phone's telling me that my memory is full so I'll have to get this uploaded to OneDrive and I'll be right back. Anyway, sorry about that. Um, so, it's a curvy U-shape. Yeah, I'll start with a curvy U-shape. And then I'll give it like a bit of a teal. And kind of round the bottom off. And then I would start another curvy U-shape beside that. And if I mess up anywhere along the line, I'd just add like a curvy worm. But yeah, i just keep it loose and curvy. And take my time. And I'll probably have to give these flames a few coats. Uh, just to make sure that the color is nice and bright. And that's the flames on the body done. Uh, but as you can see, they'll probably need another couple of coats uh, just to make that color a bit brighter. But yeah, now I can move on. I, I want to get some on the tanks as well, but uh, maybe slightly smaller. So I'll just start them on the tanks here. And you can see there I've already done some there on the end of the flamethrower. And I'm just going to go back over everything. And just to make sure it's as bright as possible. And that red paint's covering as good as it possibly can. I mean, my paints aren't that expensive. They're not great paints. But if you give it a few good thin coats, it does cover okay. And then finally, just a bit of dry brushing, just to try and blend that orange and uh, red together a wee bit better. I'm just dry brushing here with the orange. And that's it. That's the, the flames done. And I just want to paint the rivets and do some highlights with metallics. And he'll be ready for his brown wash. And then finally some lacquer. And I've got my Extreme Sheen silver here. And this is just some sponge from the kitchen. And I'll just load up my sponge with some Extreme Sheen silver. And just dab it on all those edges and corners. And I don't want to be too heavy handed with it. I can always put more on, but I can't take any off. And so just being a wee bit careful, you don't want to put too much on in one go. And then I'll take my small brush and just highlight some of those exposed rust areas and maybe join up some of those uh, smudges that I put on with a sponge. And then I'm going to take some worn penny and I'm just going to uh, put some shading on those metallic areas. And not too much, I'm not going to go too mad. I uh, just want to sort of tone down some areas of this metallic this extreme sheen is just too extreme for me. So, uh, yeah, it just sells it a wee bit more. And that's all the damage done. Um, all the rivets are painted. Um, I'll give those a wee bit of shading on the bottom edge as well with some of that worn penny. And, yeah, he's ready for some brown wash. Uh, but I'll let, just let him dry overnight first. And just get some newspaper put down here because this is going to be messy. And this is just some brown oil paint mixed with white spirit. And uh, I'll just pour some out without making a mess there, yeah. 
and I'm just going to apply this all over really very generously and make an even bigger mess and then just sort of dab it off with some kitchen paper. So, as always, thanks for watching and I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, you just know where to go there down below. And remember, there are no stupid questions here, so work away. Do me a wee favour and like and subscribe and share and all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye!